Hello everybody and welcome back to my corner of the internet. My name is Rob and today we're going to be exploring one of our viewers curiosity. For my CAD model of the day challenge for day 20, I posted an animation of my logo coming up from nothing as if it was being 3D printed. And by the way, if you're not following my CAD model of the day project, the best place to do so is Instagram because I can upload a ton of photos and videos there without any limits. But I also will post to Twitter and if you're subscribed to me on YouTube, then you'll also see those posts in the community tab and whenever you scroll YouTube. But yeah, if you want daily models, updates, and memes delivered directly to your feed, follow me at SolidWorks Nerd. But yeah, let's just get into it. In front of me here, I have, well, it's my logo rendered as a SolidWorks part. And this particular method should work for pretty much any SOLIDWORKS part. I'm actually hard pressed to think of an example that would counter this, but if you try this and it doesn't work out, let me know in the comments so we can take a look at it. But I think this should work for practically all SOLIDWORKS parts. So what we're going to be doing is taking advantage of the in-context modeling for assemblies. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. The, the short of it is you define a part in the context of an assembly. That's where the name comes from such that when things in the assembly move, the part rebuilds and changes its shape. If you're interested in a video on this, let me know in the comments and I'll make one, but that's all we need to know for this video. But taking a closer look at our part here, we'll go ahead and get started. So, so the first thing we need to do is throw a sketch down on the part that we can draw a line in the direction that we want the 3D print animation to go up. So that could be the front plane or the right plane for me, but I can, I'll just put the front. So what I'll do here is I'll grab a line and go a little bit beneath the origin and make that vertical, just like that. The bottom end of this line, I actually want to define. So I'll just do that there. I want to go a little bit past the origin a little bit and I'll get to why that is in just a second. But the other end of the line here, it's going to be very tempting to want to define this, but we actually just need this to be loose like that. We're going to define this later in context once we make an assembly. But that's all we need for right now. So I'll exit the sketch. And basically the feature that makes the whole 3D print animation work is called cut with surface. And cut with surface, as the name implies, allows you to choose a surface and it destroys all material to one side or the other. But a little known fact about cut with surface is that you can also throw planes in there. And that's what I'll do here. I'm gonna use a plane to cut away part of my model here. But first we need that plane. So I'm gonna to go to reference geometry and get ourselves a plane. And for the definition, it's gonna be the end of the line here, and then the line itself. So this does two things. The end of the line defines where along the height the plane is gonna be, and the line is just a thing to be perpendicular to, so that makes it go perfectly straight up and down. I'm gonna hit OK. And since I have Instant 3D on, I can actually drag the end of this line, and what you'll notice is as I do this, the plane is moving around. This is one of the keys that will make this whole thing work. So now I can apply the cut with surface feature and that is found under surfaces, cut with surface right here. I can throw the plane in there. And remember the arrow wants to eat all the material that it's facing. And in this case, I want it to eat the material on the top here. So I'll click to flip its direction and hit okay. And we have chopped our poor logo down to size. But what this does is, well, let me just show you here. So as you can see, we can move the end of this line around and it will update where the cut is. And this is another one of the keys to getting this animation to work. But let's talk about the two extreme positions, when it starts at the bottom and when it goes to the top. So when it goes to the top, so I'll keep going until it is taller than the part like this, a little bit more, I think. Okay, just like that. You see my surface cut fails. It throws an error, and that's because it doesn't want to cut air. The feature fails, but that's okay because we're already finished with our cut. We don't need to cut anything else. 
So you see here in a little bit that it actually doesn't matter. But then let's talk about how it starts. So it needs to start below the part or right at there. And you can see it also fails too because it's not really cutting through anything. Even though it's in that direction, it doesn't slice through anything. But the reason I overbuilt the line a little bit, so you could see that, you know, if I rotate it like that, actually, let's just get the front view. So as you can see, I didn't put the line right here because it needs to start there. And what SolidWorks really hates more than this failing is zero length lines. That causes a lot of bad things to happen. So I put this extra bit of, this little extra bit on the line here so that the cut has a place to start. And that's the reason I did that. And that's actually all the setup I need in the part. Now I can go into the assembly and rig this up to animate. So first I'm gonna save and then say uh, file, make assembly from part. I will throw my, this part right at the center. And I'll do that by just hitting the check. All right, so our parts in place here, but how are we gonna get it to move? And that's where the in-context modeling is gonna come into play. So what I'll do here is I'll say, insert component, new part. And if I go out here, so you see that my cursor has a little check, wants me to place it. I'll just place it on the front plane. It doesn't really matter because I'm gonna remove the mate that is actually holding it in place because I wanna mate it in my own way. So. I'll just get out of the sketch and I'll say, get out of editing the part. So you can see that we have this part one carrot assem one. That is our virtual part that we have created using our new part here. Um, it's immovable right now. It thinks it's fully defined, but we can take care of that by going into the mate, right clicking on in place. You can either delete it or suppress. I like to suppress just in case I, I need it later. I almost never do, but you know, maybe this will be the first time. But at this point, we now have a part that is in free space, and this is tough to see. Let me see if I can, um, maybe if I get part origins here, view origins. All right, so you can see the little blue origin there. And let me move this out of place so you can actually see its origin. So let me go to here, move component, this, and there we go. So you can see there is a virtual part that we created. It's just a little floating origin. There's nothing there right now. But we're gonna lock this so that its only free movement is up and down. So we'll get to that. So the first thing we need to do is we can say the front plane of our virtual part and the front plane of the assembly needs to be coincident. You can see it moved over a little bit. And then we can also say that the right plane of the virtual part and the right plane of the assembly also coincident. So those two planes being coincident basically will act like an axis and it should only be able to slide up and down just like that so so far so good and now what I'm gonna do here is well we're gonna attach this line and so I'm gonna edit in context the original parts of my virtual flat part I'll click there and say edit component oh I gotta save it let me do that and we can save internally that's fine all right, so we're editing now, and we know this because, well, we have this little icon here. Um, my virtual flat part has turned blue, or the text has turned blue, and that's indicative of we're editing the part right now in context specifically. So I'm gonna go find the sketch, which is this one here, and Oh, another thing is make sure this no external references button is turned off. So the way I have it is correct. If you see it depressed like that, cheer it up and unpress it, but make sure it's unpressed or this won't work. But I'll edit the sketch. See, there it is. And I can click on the end of this line 
go into my tree and go into the virtual part and pick the top plane. So I'm holding control, clicking the top plane, saying those are coincident. You can see it moved up a little bit. And that should be it. I can exit the sketch and exit edit component. So now if I move this part, so let me go back here to move component. If I move that, hit OK, and hit rebuild, so control B, we have our motion. To make this a little bit easier, easier to control, when we animate it, I'm going to add one more mate, and that's going to be between the top plane, so the very same plane that we stuck the end of the line to, and the top plane of the assembly, we're going to say, make it a distance. Distance. And for right now, I'll pick zero. So that's where it's going to start. I'll hit OK. You can see it's throwing our error again. You see the sketch itself is fine because it's not a zero length line, but surface cut is throwing an error. And this is actually one of the very few cases where the error error is okay here. It'll be fine when we animate it in, the, in those intermediate positions, it will, well, it'll rebuild just fine. So let's get to that. I'm gonna go into my motion study one. And if I expand my mates, you can see that we have our mates here that we should be able to control. So let me drag this out to like two seconds or something like that. And I'll go here, right click and say place key. I can double click to change the value. And I think this thing is like two inches tall. Let's try two. Hit rebuild. Okay, yeah, it is two inches tall. Hit okay. And now with that key place, you can see that this little blue bar appeared and that means it's going to solve for the intermediate positions. So it starts at zero, ends at two. And just to make sure we got this correct, let's hit calculate. And there you go. And it's just doing the um, loop. You can also have it boomerang if you want. So if you want to go like that and you can hit play, it's gone back it's gone so so you can see there's kind of a flash there and that's because there's one frame where the surface cut totally fails you know goes too low and it can't resolve that but that's okay because we'll put the frame rate high enough and we might just have to lop off the extra frame whatever whatever the case it'll be fine but before I export this okay you can stop now so before I export this I'll go into my gear and you know, for usually most of the time, eight frames per second is way too low. So most of my animations, I like to have it 60 frames per second. And yeah, make sure it looks just the way you want. If you want real view, you can put that on or make it like cartoon. And that's actually how I get my logo. It's just a cartoon rendering of this part or ambient occlusion, oh, all this fun stuff. Make sure you set all of this before just leave it in cartoon there we go and yeah and to save it out you'll just go to here where it says save animation and yeah you can just I, I like to put it as mp4 you know put whatever aspect ratio oh it's off to the side a little bit so I can fix that so what I'll do is I'll click this little tab to force this thing over and then hit F on my keyboard to center it and then go to orientation and camera views, say replace key. And that commits to the animation that this is the new position. So save MP4 one to one and frames per second. Again, put 60 hit save. Would you like to recalculate? You can just hit yes. All right. So it's working on it here. Okay, and that should be it. So let's go ahead, see what we got there. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So I can just adjust the uh, the color settings and notice that the origins actually show up. So what I should have done is hit this eyeball here to clear that and just resave it. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So 
I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And also feel free to subscribe and follow me on social media at SolidWorksNerd. And with that, have a good day, and I will see you next time.